Hi, today I'm going to show how I'm using this device along with Home Assistant to help me diagnose a problem and also prevent future expensive repairs to my home. So hang around. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. Today's video is going to be rather short, well, short compared to my normal videos. But I'm going to go ahead and leave links down here in the timeline and the video description if you wish to jump around a bit. Now we have a rather old front-loading washer in our laundry room, and on rare occasions, this the washer has randomly filled with water even though the door wasn't latched and a cycle hadn't been run. That caused all the water to leak out of the front of the washer and basically flood this room and soak that rug. Now it's only happened a couple of times over multiple years so it's been really hard for me to determine what the cause might be and we also live in a house with a finished basement that has a sump pump in a mechanical room so between these two things i'm always a little bit worried about flooding and causing damage so i thought if i could add some kind of leak or water detection integrate that into home assistant i could be notified as soon as water was detected and in the case of the washer, that might help me identify some kind of cause as to why it was randomly filling. And of course, in other situations, if you're notified as soon as a leak occurs, you might be able to do something to stop it from causing more damage to your home. So today I'm going to take a look at the Acara uh, water leak sensor. No, Acara did not provide this and are not sponsoring this video. We're going to take a little closer look at the sensor and see what it takes to get that into Home Assistant and create some notifications in the event of a leak. So this is the Acara water leak sensor. And you notice on here it does say an Acara hub is required. And of course, if you have a hub, it's fine to use that. But I can tell you that I am using a Sonoff uh, Zigbee hub that has been flashed with Tasmoda. And I've had no problem at all uh, pairing these devices. And I'll show that in just a little bit on how we get that directly into Home Assistant since ZHA has a native integration. But here, let's take a look at the actual sensor itself. There's also a book in here, which we don't need. Um, it is relatively small, just to give you an idea of comparison. Uh, there's a quarter, and I would say it's actually just, just slightly bigger than an Oreo cookie. And actually, the thickness is about the same as well. These are your two sensors. This is powered off of CR2032 cell battery. And to get to that battery, we just simply twist this. It unscrews from the bottom. And there is our battery. There is one thing I will uh, say that I'm a little bit disappointed is that most of these devices that run off of cell batteries like that normally have a small plastic tab that stops the battery from basically draining when it's in storage. This doesn't have that. And of the two that I've onboarded already, the battery has started out right around the upper 70s. So depending on how long it's sitting, again, it's not going to drain a lot of battery uh, when it's idle. But the fact that depending on how long it's been sitting on the shelf, you're not going to have a 100% battery new out of the box. So the process for pairing this and getting it into Home Assistant is extremely easy. We'll take a look at that next. I am here in my settings. I'm just going to go to my integrations. And again, I'm using ZHA. Uh, this device is also supported through Zigbee to MQTT if that's what you happen to be using. But I'm just going to go into my devices and I'm going to click Add Device down here in the bottom corner. Now on the leak detector itself, the button is actually this water symbol. So hopefully you can see I'm going to press and hold that until that light starts to blink. And then I can release it. And then we wait to see if Home Assistant or our Zigbee Hub will see it. Okay, it took a minute or two, but now we are paired up. And now we can just simply change this. I'm going to call this one a kitchen sink leak sensor. Because I'm actually going to put this one underneath my kitchen sink. I'm going to put an area in there. And that's it. I can now go back and I should see my kitchen sink leak sensor. Going to that, I have my binary sensor here, which of course I'm going to rename that. Again, you can name these anything you want, although it is, as you see, it also exposes a temperature. Now, this is going to be the temperature of the device, not necessarily the temperature of the room. Uh, we also have it's an identity. We also have a power, which is our battery rating. Now, this one's actually a little bit higher than the ones that I did before. 
This is showing 84%. Okay, that was it. We now have everything in Home Assistant. If we come over here and look at our devices, let's just do kitchen, sink, leak, and then there's our detection, and then there's our battery. I'm not showing the temperature here because I named it something different. But it was that easy to get this out Home Assistant. I can now take this and put it under my kitchen sink and create automations. And for those of you that are interested, I'll do a real quick overview of the automation I created for my leak detectors. Again, obviously I'm using YAML. I'm using packages. If you want to know more about how and why I moved to packages, I have another video that talks about that along with upcoming MQTT changes in Home Assistant. And you can see a link to that up in the corner and down in the video description. But really all I'm doing here is I'm watching for that leak detector to go from off to on, which it will do when it detects water. I've added a two second delay and the reason for that is I snooze all of my notifications at night, but I don't want to snooze this one. But if it happens to bounce quickly from off to on and back off again, I don't necessarily want to be woken up in the middle of the night. Uh, if you want to see more about how I handle uh, voice notifications in Home Assistant, I have another video. Uh, again, link in the corner and link down in the video description. But in short, when it goes from off to on to text water, I'm going to call a script that's going to handle all of my notifications. I'm also going to pass the message I want for those notifications. So these are all exactly the same, except for the message changes. Down here is where I actually do my notifications. Uh, in my case, which you're going to see in a second, it's based on Star Trek Red Alert. So I'm actually going to turn my lights uh, bright red. I'm going to play a little red alert sound, but then I'm going to send a message to all of my Google Home devices spread out throughout the home uh, with that message. I'm also going to send a push notification with that same message to my phone in case I happen to not be home. So now let's take a look at how this works in action. All right, let's give my automation and the sensor a quick test. Uh, you can see I've got just a little bit of water in here. This, by the way, is the washer sensor. I already put the sink sensor under the sink. This was just easier to get to. So we're just going to drop this in this water, and after our two-second delay, our automation ought to fire. Red alert. A leak has been detected at the washer. Yeah, that's one of my automations that doesn't have a real high wife approval factor, but it's actually an automation that you really hope never triggers, and if it does, you definitely want it to get your attention which mine will. Now there are other types of water and leak detectors available and some of these detect leaks by actually measuring the pressure in your water pipes and some of them will actually shut off your main water supply if a leak is detected. But those are quite a bit more expensive and often require some sort of modification to your existing plumbing system. These Akara sensors on the other hand are only about $19 currently on Amazon and there's an additional 10% coupon available right now. And it took me about 30 minutes from start to finish, including writing the Home Assistant automation for the first one. And each one I've added since then has only taken about 10 minutes. And it doesn't require, obviously, any modification to your existing plumbing system. And since adding that first one to cover my washer and adding one to the mechanical room, I have now added a leak detector next to every toilet in the house and under every sink in the house. So the Akara sensors is a pretty cheap way to give you peace of mind and to help you stop a leak quickly before it causes major damage to your home. And if you're not a Home Assistant user, you can actually use the Akara Hub, which will sound an audible alarm at the hub and will also send you a notification on your phone if a leak is detected. And as always, you can find links to any of the products that I showed in this video down in the video description. In the interest of trying to keep this under 10 minutes, I'm just going to quickly say hit that like button, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos, and ding the little bell icon if you want to be notified. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon.